said I got this None of this radio pop shit I dropped this Turning back the clock to rock shit I cop it Said knock knock I'm on this I'm hot bitch Like a hot bitch to stop it I'm rockin', I got this Radio drop this Hot shit just watch this I fucking promise So it do not miss Your chance to cop this Hey everybody, welcome to week number three of the FGFL 19 first season. We have three games on highlight for you today, and it is the Los Angeles Rams taking on the Arizona Cardinals here in this young season. A big divisional matchup as Russell Watson going to throw for the first down there on third down. And then Russell Watson from his own 43 going to roll to the right as a left-handed quarterback and fire it down to Boyer to the 23-yard line. That would set up a Rams field goal later on. Another drive here with the Rams, and that is Watson down the middle of the field to, we're going we're gonna to say his name's pronounced Newhar. That would set up another field goal. Here's Watson again, and he's going to throw this one over to Newhar, and that is going to be a touchdown reception, giving the Rams an early 13-0 lead here in the second quarter. Then a throw over to Boyer on the slant, and that is going to get the Rams a 20-0 lead. I know, if this was a freaking stream, you'd all be yelling Sim, but here is Fox. Looking to put the Cardinals back in the game here in the second half. Downfield it is Shivers, and he's going to make the play there. That only leads to a Cardinal field goal, but hey, something's better than nothing. There's a throw to Green for, for the Rams. That's going to set up a first and goal, and it is Russell Watson. Throw to the back of the end zone, and he's got Newhar for his second touchdown of the day. Setting up a 27-3 lead. Cardinals playing for a little pride here at home. It is Fox looking for his first touchdown throw of the day. And that's going to go to Shivers for the touchdown. It would be a 27-9 game at this point. Cardinals would try going for two here. Trying to expedite the process of coming back. And it is not going to work out as Sawanga is stopped well in the backfield. The onside kick is no good, and that is how it ends. A 27-9 game, a win for the Rams. Russell Watson was very good. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. Hanson Fox ended up pretty good. Uh, his completion percentage was not very good, but he didn't get a lot of help from the run game. Adrian Lusk, the best running back in the league, was not very good. Adrian Newhar, however, was very good today for the Rams, as well as Bradford Boyer. So two guys getting it done for the Rams in the receiving core. Looking over at defensively, it wasn't a huge game for either defense. Two sacks for the Rams, both by Eckford Ziegler. And um, no interceptions or forced fumbles or anything. So not a huge defensive game. Moving on to the second game on highlight this week. It is the Tennessee Titans taking on the Los Angeles Chargers. Double LA for you guys today. These colors were a little bit confusing to watch, but a nice throw from Deshaun Watson, not Russell Watson, on that one to set up a first down. And then another nice throw over there to Spears. And that's going to put the LA Chargers in business as Steele with a nice run, putting on the spin cycle and running over a few dudes down to the 17. Third and 13 for Deshaun Watson. He will find Lambert down to the four. Gets him a first down. Now second and goal. And Deshaun Watson going to take it into his own hands and slide into the end zone for a touchdown. LA Chargers go on top early 7-0 as he runs into the stands like a ghost. Fourth and 10. Here is a field goal try and not even close for Tennessee. That would lead the Chargers to this point where another touchdown and this time Deshaun Watson throwing the slant pattern and getting the TD there and it is 14-0 Chargers. Now Jared Goff on a third and seven for Tennessee. He will find Gardner for the touchdown and the Titans cut the lead in half. Here we go, second and three Chargers from their own 47, and that one will be intercepted with very little time to go in the half. Tennessee would take advantage, get a field goal. They get a field goal coming out of the half, 
And now the Chargers and Deshaun Watson on the move. And there's Steele with a brilliant dive for the touchdown. And that's going to give the Chargers a 21-13 lead going late in the third. Goff down the middle to Campbell. Nice strike right there. First and ten. Last play of the third. Another nice throw. This one goes to Harrison. That'll set up a first down to start the fourth. And there's a nice strike to Gardner again. And now a third and goal for Tennessee. Goff going to throw this one nearly intercepted. Does not work out, but they're going to go for it on fourth and goal with 6.32 to go. Hands it off to Parmalee, and he is stuffed. So the Chargers take the field. They do nothing with the football. Tennessee gets it back. And here's Estes with a nice catch down to the 10. Goff looking, finding in the back of the end zone. Touchdown to Gonzalez. He is very happy about that one. They're going to go for two here, try and tie the game. Parmalee will not get there for the second time here inside the five. He just cannot get it done. Later on, though, Goff with the ball back again. That one, an incompletion, could have been picked off. Here is third and six for Goff. And Goff looking and incomplete. Another one that could have been picked off. Goff getting a little lucky here. They're going for a 57-yarder. And they take the one-point lead with 1.32 to go. However, Chargers not done. Deshaun Watson running around, and he will find the running back, Steele, who just can't break free. But he is deep inside Tennessee territory, and he will run the ball on third and five. Dangerous play call works out for the Charger coach. Deshaun Watson throwing this one. Steele again. Steele has been with nerves of steel today. And there is fourth and goal. The Chargers will take the two-point lead with only eight seconds to play. And they would hang on to it. Jared Goff outplaying Deshaun Watson just a little bit today. But still taking the L due to Alvaron Steele playing as well as he did for L.A. There's Estes, Gonzalez, Harrison, Campbell all getting their catches in for Tennessee however just not enough today and Tennessee had all of the defensive sacks they split on interceptions and no one got any fumbles moving on to your selected and voted game of the week it is the Dallas Cowboys on the road to take on the Washington Redskins in a big time divisional matchup this is what you guys wanted to see it is J.W. Francis taking a sack on the very first play of the game. It's Guion. Now third and eight for Francis from his own 23. Way downfield, showing off the arm strength, and Castillo making a huge catch. Now they would lead to this fourth and goal. Fake field goal, and Spiegel would go down. So Washington takes over. Here's Valerio with his own really nice throw. And now Valerio going to hand this one off to Dial. That's right, FGFL 19 has its own Dial. Valerio will find his receiver on the slant for the touchdown. And the Redskins will take a 7-0 lead. The Jedi Fighters. Here's J.W. Francis. He is going to find Armstead for the first down on a third and five. Now a third and 11 a little bit later here in the same drive. And Francis going to take the hit. It will be fourth down. They would punt. Washington with the ball back on third and 12. Valerio with a nice throw to Walker near the 50. Now Valerio on second and five. Looking around, he will find Wall, and that will be a first down. Second and eight. It is Valerio. Valerio to his right, and he is going to take this one himself for the first down, down to the 30. Third and one, and Dial will get stuffed. That would lead to a Redskin field goal. Third and six for Francis. He's going to throw this one, and Peck can't quite get to the marker. So Redskins back with the football. Coming down, and a careless throw right there. Intercepted by Garner of the Cowboys. 
And now the Cowboys have a chance to put some points on the board before halftime. And France is going to take a huge sack, first and 10. And now second and 16, Francis again is going to get slammed. And now on a third and 29, it is Francis throwing it down, and that is overthrown. So a fourth and 29, you would think they would punt, but they're not going to as the last play of the half is in their hands. And Francis completes the pass to Castillo, but he has no time to get into the end zone. Redskins now opening up the half. On a fourth and two, they're going to go for it, and it amounts to nothing for them except for a sack. So Cowboys get good field position, and on a third and six, a nice completion right there from Francis. Now a third and five, and Francis over to Armstead for the touchdown, and the Cowboys are on the board just three points down. As outplayed as they've been for so long in this game, they're just three points down, and Valerial going to look to put some more points on the board with that first down right there and now the handoff to dial and he's doing his part as he picks up the first down now a third and 11 to open up the fourth quarter and downfield a big pass to heath and the tight end hasn't been heard from much but he's heard from right here as he goes down to the ground to make a touchdown reception that is two straight catches there for Heath and a big time touchdown getting the Redskins their 10 point lead back they would get the ball back again later another huge throw by Valerio over to Walker and that will be Walker's second touchdown of the day that one of 78 yards Cowboys trying to come back a fourth and 14 no good for him led to a Redskin field goal it is 27-7 and now the Cowboys just playing for a little bit of pride here on the road. And France is going to go down again with another huge sack. And now a fourth and 18. Francis down the right to Reynolds for the touchdown. Very nice throw. I mean, Francis really, there's the take the L dance. But the only one who took the L today were the Dallas Cowboys. Francis showing some great flashes. A 140 quarterback rating outplayed Valerio on the quarterback or QBR standpoint. But Dial had 125 yards today. And Oscar Walker was incredible. Castillo was very nice, even with no TDs. But Dallas just couldn't put it all together today. Francis has quite an arm. We can see that. Guion had two sacks for the Redskins. The Redskins had a few shining stars in today's game. Now let's take a look at some of the other games. The Philadelphia Eagles will take down the Carolina Panthers with 10 fourth quarter points. Way to go, Eagles, in this one. Quinn Ali, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Quarterback play wasn't very good for the Eagles. The running game was okay for them, I guess. They weren't very good on the offensive side of the ball. But neither team really was that great. As far as sacks goes, the Eagles had the only sacks. There were no interceptions. And there really were no fumbles either. Moving on to the next game. We have the Pittsburgh Steelers shutting out the Baltimore Ravens. 37 to nothing. Grant Harrell. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. George Gardner had 69 yards on 18 carries. Absolutely incredible this Pittsburgh Steelers team was in this game. Some huge plays by the receivers. They ended up with some TDs there. And as far as sacks are concerned, a couple from two different players. Both teams seem to be getting after the quarterback. Interception by Corey Snyder of the Steelers. And nothing in the fumble department. Next game, the Browns go on the road in New Orleans and win 21-7. A.J. Quasio with two touchdowns, no interceptions. Trey Hughes, 74 yards and a touchdown for him. A very good game all around there offensively by the Browns. Did pretty well through the air and very well on the ground as well. 
one catch for Hughes for 34 and a touchdown. I guess maybe it was all Hughes. I don't know. We'll 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 see. And then there are quite a bit of sacks there, actually, to be honest with you. No interceptions. And another game with nothing in the fumble department. Next game, the Cincinnati Bengals take down the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They had a 14-10 halftime lead, dwindled to 14-13, but they ultimately come out on top in the fourth quarter, a game that went to the wire. Duncan Roca, three touchdowns, no interceptions. They also had the better run game of the two teams in Cincinnati. Receiving game was a little bit better with Tampa Bay, I would actually say. A lot of their receivers look to be more higher on that list. Sack-wise, Clayton Nelms got two. Another guy got one there. And then a couple guys for the Bucks getting on that board. One interception, it was Fernando Faulkner. And another game with no fumbles. The Miami Dolphins fall to the New England Patriots in New England, 27-14. Again, that's really nothing new in real life for really in uh, FGFL 19 to this point. Um, Maxie Morrison, nice running by him, but really not a ton to be happy about if you are a Dolphin supporter in this series or if you're their Dolphin coach. Nice sack right there for Miami, but I mean, really, there really wasn't much going on here. Um, seemed to be dominated mostly by New England. The Denver Broncos in overtime, including 14 fourth quarter points, take down the Kansas City Chiefs 34 to 28. What a game! Looks like a classic divisional matchup. Lawrence Ainge with two touchdowns, no interceptions. Brandon West signed fresh off waivers from the Broncos. Not sure if the Broncos wanted to start him, but, you know, he's the better overall, and the computer put him there, I guess. And there were no specifications in the uh, depth chart. So, signed off waivers, played well enough to get a win, and they did get a win. A lot of sacks on that field as well. Interception by Pierce Chapman was overcome by the Broncos in overtime, ultimately. The Bills take down the Jets 18-8 in a very strange game. Bills were up 7-2 at the half. Uh, just a very odd, strange game in this one, but the Bills would come out on top. The, Bill, the Jets just have not looked good this season. Even uh, Unger, who's supposed to be the best quarterback in this league, didn't look like it today at all. So, it, it's been strange. A strange season for the Jets, and uh, this one is another L for them. Going up against a division rival. Colts Jaguars, a very tightly contested divisional game again, and a 23 20 win for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Two touchdowns, no interceptions for Shepard. Um, Jaguars were able to overcome this with a decent running game and uh, Rasmussen doing his thing again. Uh, Rasmussen coming through big in a couple games this year for Jacksonville. And this one's no different. On the sack front, Daniel Darius got a couple sacks in there for the Jaguars. And that really helped them out defensively. San Francisco really get shellacked here by the Seattle Seahawks 48 to 13 they just got dumped on in every facet of the game here no advance three touchdowns no interceptions Brian Kocher freshly starting this week one touchdown three interceptions they also got dumped on in the run game there 130 something yards and a touchdown and the receivers were better for Seattle as well. Just every facet of the offense was better. And then on defense, Seattle getting after the quarterback just slightly more. But the interceptions will kill you every time. And there actually was a forced fumble by the Niners, but it wasn't recovered by them. 
Atlanta Falcons will take down the Green Bay Packers 31 to 10. Falcons spec uh, speculated to be tanking. It doesn't look like they're doing a great job of it as they win this game. Three touchdowns, no interceptions for their quarterback. Uh, on the receiving end, nobody fantastic uh, really got anything done here. Hay and Carlisle of the Falcons with touchdown receptions in this one. Um, if, if Coach Phil Bonzo is looking to tank, he is... Uh, not really doing a great job of it. A couple sacks there by the Packers, and still Atlanta able to come out on top. The two interceptions mean just a little bit more. And as far as fumbles, there was a forced fumble and recovery by the Packers, and even that was overcome by Atlanta. The Vikings will lose to the Detroit Lions 21 to 17. Um. Interesting. The Detroit Lions uh, coach steps down earlier, and they win. So this is a mark of two computer teams, so I'm not really going to go crazy looking at stats, but I will run through them real quick. But yes, the Lions over the Vikings in this one. Okay, the Houston Texans in a 35-14 win over the Raiders, who were undefeated coming into this game. Two touchdowns, two picks for their quarterback. Helps the Texans win this game. Holloway still with the Texans. He will be traded after this week, I believe. Uh, we will see how many more trades have to go through. But he should be on the docket to be traded this week. So maybe he won't have that firepower next week. And the Bears. And the Giants. The Bears 24-10. Really sad that Nathaniel had to step down from coaching this team as they're undefeated. Benjamin Eby claimed off waivers is just destroying teams right now. Uh, with two touchdowns, no interceptions there. And just overall, the Bears continue to have these great games. Nick McGill, two sacks. They got a lot of sacks from some other guys. We got a pick from Curtis Hobson. Just all in all, still very sad to see that their coach steps down. Looking at injuries, we're going to run through these. A lot of teams just don't have injuries. I don't, I don't know, guys. Madden's just not giving injuries out. There's a couple there for the Buccaneers. There's one there for the Chiefs. That's a pretty important player, Hunter. A couple there for the Eagles. That looks like they'll get one back very shortly. Jaguars lose Rasmus, and that's huge. They lost him for five weeks now. Rasmussen was a big player for them. Keith Frazier lost on the Patriots. The Saints have lost a backup quarterback, I assume, Kerry Labounty. Scandrick for, at D-tackle for the Seahawks, and then Battle at running back for the Steelers. And then a defensive tackle for the Vikings, Will Harper. He'll be out for a few weeks. Looking at the standings, I'm going to go through them like this. You guys can kind of see what the waiver order would be. And somebody can post that in waivers. That would be appreciated. I will be showing off waivers as well as full rosters in a separate video later on. So stay tuned for that. I just wanted to get week number three out for you guys. So... A very interesting week number three sets us up here for some drama in week number four. We've got the Dolphins going on the road to take on the Bears. We've got the Eagles going to Detroit. We've got the Patriots and the Bills in a divisional matchup. Vikings going to New York to take on the Giants. We have Seahawks, Saints, Browns, Panthers, Cowboys, Falcons, Steelers, Bengals, that could be a big uh, divisional matchup. Unfortunately, one of those teams is a computer team now. Um, we do have the Cardinals and the Chiefs. We have the Chargers and the Broncos. We have the Packers, Niners. We have the Texans, Colts. 
Monday night is the Jets Titans, and then the Thursday night football game Buccaneers Ravens. Thank you guys so much for watching week number three of FGFL 19. I will see you all in the Discord. I guess you guys can start voting on the game you would like to see in week. Thank you.